Well, E3 came and went, and Steam featured a ton of new game demos to try out. I decided to play two of those demos and cover them in a single video, those being Sable and Lake. Sable is a title that I've kept an eye on for some time now, by following the devs on Twitter. Lake is something I noticed while perusing through the Steam catalog, and the screenshots caught my attention, but I'll get to that one later. Sable is an upcoming exploration game with a desert punk aesthetic. The game's title refers to the protagonist's name, a young woman embarking on a quest known as the Gliding. It seems that every member of the clan must go through the Gliding as a coming-of-age ritual, and now it's Sable's turn. Sable can be best described as a minimalist adventure game. The models, textures, animations, and UI are all very simple, but that doesn't mean that the game is bland. Far from it. What initially caught my eye when I saw Sable was its art direction. A lot of people liken it to French comic artist Mobius' art style, and I can see the inspiration. To me, its flat coloring and grainy looking textures reminded me of this anime my friends watched, Dragon's Heaven. As the devs showed off gameplay clips, I immediately fell in love with the minimalist animations. It's almost like the animations are comprised of keyframes with little to no in-betweens. It adds to the surreal quality of the game. Seeing the simple colors move around in real time makes me feel like I'm running around in an impressionist painting. I won't go in depth over what happens in the demo, but I will explain the mechanics that the game introduces, as well as give my take on how the game plays so far. So what do you do in Sable? You can run and jump, and if you press up against the wall, Sable will immediately climb it. Breath of the Wild climbing is always a welcome feature. Holding down the sprint button or climbing on a wall will consume Sable stamina, displayed as a small white diamond that hovers near Sable's head and will fade away when not in use. Because the gliding will take Sable far away from the village, she'll need a bike to cover all that ground. The village wants to make sure Sable knows the fundamentals before setting her loose so she has to perform a series of quests to prepare for the gliding. One of the villagers lets Sable use his bike to get around the map and finish her errands. Hey, yo! Bring around the loner. The loner? The loner. It handles like a piece of crap, and I think that's the point. I bet it's going to feel a whole lot better when we finally get our own bike. At some point in the tutorial, you get the ability to activate a bubble shield that serves as a glide function. The bubble slows Sable's ascent and doesn't seem to have a limit on how long it stays active. What's really cool about the bubble is that you can activate it at the last minute to break a really nasty fall, or spam it to descend faster than holding it down. To get around the map, the village gives Sable a compass and a spyglass. Holding down the compass button displays it around Sable and shows all of the points of interest in the map relative to Sable's position. It also tells you where True North is, so you can use a compass to find undiscovered areas based on directions that other characters will give to you. The spyglass allows Sable to mark areas in 3D from a first person perspective that will display on her compass. I think that moving the spyglass's cursor feels a little too sluggish for my liking, but you can also look at the map in the menu and place those same markers overhead for a more accurate method, or remove them to declutter the compass when you've reached those areas. Death Stranding had a similar mechanic where Sam could go into a first person mode and mark areas in a similar way. It's easier to use in Death Stranding, but Sable might still be tweaking it to feel less clunky. So how does Sable play? Going from the demo, it's probably going to be a mix of Journey and Death Stranding. The journey comparison really only comes from the fact that both games involve the player going on a trek through the desert, and a Death Stranding comparisons come from the emphasis on traversal and completing fetch quests for various characters. If you've ever played Tiny and Big, it feels similar to going through the tutorial level in that game. The demo is a big sandbox that leaves it up to you whether you want to complete all of the quests in the demo, or just wander around and climb the level. There are hidden collectibles scattered about the map, but I don't think they'll have any significance until the full game is out. The desert punk aesthetic and minimalist design makes the game world feel very easy to read in terms of traversal. Green shrubbery is used to designate areas that Sable should climb to progress quests, and every point of interest that the clan indicates to Sable has distinguishing features that pop out of the earth tones of the desert palette. There are wreckages scattered about the desert that seem to imply that society was originally more advanced than it is now, but there aren't any text logs that outright tell you what happened, 
Just implications. When you complete all of the main quests in the level, the demo ends, and it's just long enough to set the tone of the game without overstaying its welcome. Definitely try the Sable demo, but be aware that it can be fickle-minded in whether it'll boot up. I was stuck on the boot screen until I closed it and verified the files, and then when I tried to restart the demo, it was stuck again. But don't let that discourage you on trying out this interesting looking game. Meredith, hi! Oh, hi Steve. How are you? Hey listen, you've got plenty of time, right? Yeah, there's not much to do around here. Awesome, I need a favor. I sent a bunch of files your way. It's the retail pitch for Added 87. Do you think you can... Uh, I'm not sure. How many pages are we talking about here? It's not much. It's just the pitch, and there's also an instruction booklet. It can't be more than 100 pages. I could just send it to your post office, right? I guess. Awesome. Mail back to me as soon as possible. Priority mail. Thanks so much. Oh, I gotta run. Okay, Steve. Oh, one final thing. Now let this marinate. <clears throat> Add it, 87. Add anything you like. It's fancy, right? Yeah, don't, don't tell me now. Uh, I got a jet. Bye. <sighs> I also played Lake's demo. It's a slice of life adventure game set in a small town in Oregon circa 1986. You play as Meredith Weiss, a computer programmer living in the big city who spends two weeks back in her hometown of Providence Oaks to cover her dad's job as a postman. Its gameplay is a lot more straightforward than Sable in terms of Meredith's actions, but it seems to fill the same niche as Sable as a chill-out game, but goes about it with a different approach. Where Sable tries to keep everything about its setting vague to encourage the player to go along with Sable and see what the gliding is all about, Lake tries to keep things relatable and low stakes. Good morning, P.O. It's time for a... P.O. Positive or Pet P. Okay, folks. Let's see what it is today. The floor is yours, Angie. Good morning, Jack. I've got a pet peeve. Returned videos that have not been rewinded. I mean, really? Be kind and rewind. Thanks. Duly noted, Angie. And now, on to today's weather. Every day starts with Meredith leaving the post office in the mail truck, or the goose as one of the locals has christened it, and delivering either mail or parcels to a number of addresses in the town. These addresses will be displayed on the mini-map, as well as a map screen. You can place a marker on the map to plot out the next destination or clear it if it's no longer relevant. Delivering mail is as simple as walking towards a designated mailbox and pressing the action button. Delivering parcels requires Meredith to open up the goose's back door and retrieve the appropriate package. The address in the parcel must correspond to the address of the recipient. The game will tell you which street you're on or which address you're at on the bottom left of the screen, but you can also figure it out with some common sense by comparing the package's address with the other addresses on the map. When you're done with the day's delivery, you return to the post office and check in at your parents' house. Meredith will entertain callers as well as guests during these moments, and you can choose how Meredith will spend the rest of the night. There's a schedule screen that displays any appointments that Meredith had set with any of P.O.'s townsfolk. From what I've seen, I think the game is going to have some Persona-esque time management, where you'll have to decide which person Meredith will prioritize on a given day, to the possible detriment of other contacts. Maybe it's because they finished it recently, but Lake reminds me of Deadly Premonition with its small town setting and reliance on quirky character interactions as its main draw. If you're not into the game, then it's easy to get put off by the characters, as there isn't really any obvious edge to them when Meredith first encounters them compared to York meeting George or some of the rougher locals in Deadly Premonition. It feels slow to start at first, and the town's layout is pretty simple compared to Greenvale, because it's comprised almost entirely out of a single road that encompasses the titular lake but I can see where the game is headed when it comes to adding more complexity to Meredith's schedule. One of the more interesting places in the game is the video store that has a ton of cheeky references to popular contemporary titles, but for some reason, it also just has titles of actual movie titles. It's weird seeing a Terminator or 16 Candles knockoff juxtaposed against the Dirty Dozen or Jaws. I feel like it should have been an all-or-nothing bit. I like Lake's art direction. It's adjacent to modern sims with everything looking like a plastic doll, but not in an unappealing way. Animations can come off stiff, and I've seen NPC pathfinding bug out, but I'm sure that'll get ironed out in the final version. Also, I think some textures could use a little more touching up so as not to look like a game running on the lowest level of detail. 
My only real complaint so far is that Meredith's base walk speed is agonizingly slow. If you hold down shift, she can run just ever so slightly faster, but I greatly appreciate a jog that gets it from a truck to the mailbox lickety split. And even if these issues aren't addressed, I personally don't mind as the game does remind me a lot of Deadly Premonition for better and worse. I can see people finding this game boring, but I dig the premise. This may sound weird coming from the guy who plays character action games, Eastern European Odysseys, and... Jeff? But I love seeing 3D adventure games that actually take advantage of the 3D space instead of just using 3D models while still playing like glorified point and clicks with limited interaction. I like what Dreamfall The Longest Journey could be, but not what it actually is, if that makes any sense. I think a good example of what I'm looking for would be the Source Pod Water, which I've covered way back when. Also, I want to play a 40 something career woman going on a soul searching vacation to get over her midlife crisis on Wii. I want to be Diane Lane in Under the Tuscan Sun, but in Oregon. So, Under the Oregon Sun. I was worried that this game was going to be like Life is Strange for Boomers, but I haven't picked up any unintentionally bad lines yet. Um, package for the Evans family? Just a minute! Commander Grace! Permission to explore? Permission granted! Yep, we're the Evans family. Could I just take that real quick? I'm kind of in the middle of a lunar landing. Sure. Here you go. <laughs> nice helmet, by the way. Why, thank you. I actually modeled it on the Apollo 11 crew outfit. Wait, what? Meredith? Buzz Aldrin? <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Who are you? What? For real? You don't recognize your old best friend when you see her? Probably helps that the script isn't trying to emulate teen speak. Now, why don't you go fuck your selfie? I have noticed that certain sound effects were either really muffled or non-existent, so I do hope those get tweaked. It's weird when the game is waiting for a cat's response and all you get is dead silence accompanied by subtitles that say meow. I'm looking forward to both Sable and Lake and recommend both demos. Sable might be easier to get into because of its unique art style and obtuse setting, but if you want to play a slice of life game that's a little Euro Truck Simulator with light adventure game interactions, then try out the Lake demo as well.